assalamu alaikum students welcome to the second lecture in real analysis in the first lecture we discussed that real analysis is concerned with the study of main concepts of mathematical analysis based on a complete and accurately defined number system and that number system is the set of real numbers so in today's lecture we are going to explore some basic properties of the real numbers which will lead us to the completeness property of the real number system so today's lecture objectives are order on a set lower bounds and upper bounds supremum and infimum and the completeness property of the real number system so we start our discussion with an ordered set so let s be a non empty set then an order on the set s is a relation this which is less than which satisfies the following two properties number 1 for any two numbers x and y belonging to s one and only one of the following statements is true there is either x is less than y or y is less than x or x is equal to 1 so this is the first order property that for any two elements of the set s only one of these three statements can happen at a time that is x is less than y or y is less than x or x is equal to y in the second order property is that for any elements x y and z belonging to s if x is less than y and y is less than z then this implies x is less than z so for any three numbers belonging to the set s if x is less than y and y is less than z then x is less than z so if any relation like this which is less than relation which satisfies these two properties on a non empty set s then that relation is called an order on that set so this relation is called an order on the set s and the set s is called 
in order set. So an ordered set is any non-empty set which has an order defined on it and the order on a non-empty set S is any relation which satisfies these two order properties that for any two elements belonging to that set one and only one of the three statements can happen that is either x is less than y, y is less than x and x is equal to y. And the second property of the order is that so for any three numbers x, y and z belonging to the set if x is less than y and y is less than z then x is less than z. So with these order properties defined the set S is called an ordered set. And the example of an ordered set is the set of real numbers. So the set of real numbers satisfies these two order properties. So, so example of an ordered set is the set of real numbers. which is R. So the set R is an ordered set. Now let us define an upper bound for a set. Let S be an ordered set and the set E be a non-empty subset subset of S there is E is subset of S. If there exists an element alpha belonging to S such that X is less than or equal to alpha for all X belonging to E then alpha is called and upper bound of the set E. Then the set E is said to be bounded above So for an ordered set S, if there is a non-empty subset of S which is E, if there exists an alpha belonging to S such that X is less than or equal to alpha for all X, for all X's belonging to E or for all the elements belonging to the set E then alpha is called an upper bound of E and the set E is said to be bounded above. So let us explain this 
with an example so let s be equal to the set of real numbers and e be any subset of the set of real numbers so it is the set of all real numbers say that 1 is less than x is less than 5 so the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5 so this is e and s is the set of real numbers so let us draw it on the number line so this is the real line so this is 0 this is 1 and so this is 5 so here the set e is this set this is e so e is the set of all the numbers which are in between this interval from 1 to 5 so all the numbers which are greater than 1 and less than 5 so this is e so now any element of this set so this is r so now any element of the set r will be an upper bound for e which is greater than or equal to all the elements of this set so it means any number greater than or equal to 5 here will be an upper bound for this set e so for example 5 is an upper bound 6 is an upper bound 5.5 is an upper bound 10 is an upper bound so any number greater than or equal to 5 here will be an upper bound for this set e so here any real number x greater than or equal to 5 is n upper bound of the set e and here 5 is the smallest of all the upper bounds for the set e so here 5 is so here x is equal to 5 is the smallest or least upper bound of e now let us give a formal definition of the least upper bound least upper bound let s be an ordered set and the set e be a non empty subset of s so there is e is a proper subset of s then an element 
alpha belonging to the set S is called the least upper bound of E if number one alpha is an upper bound of E and for any element g if g is less than alpha then g is not an upper bound of e So now let us explain this again taking the same example that we did previously. So our set S is the set of all real numbers and E is the set of all real numbers such that 1 is less than x is less than 5, the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5. So this is a real line this is 1 so this is 5 so this is our set E from 1 to 5 so this is E so now any element so this is E and this is R so now a real number will be the least upper bound for E if it is an upper bound. So as you can see that all the numbers greater than or equal to 5 are the upper bounds for this set E. So 5 and any number greater than 5 is an upper bound and any number G which is less than alpha and then g is not an upper bound so any number so here alpha so so the, so the smallest value of alpha here is 5 so the smallest value of alpha here is 5 so any number less than 5 will not be an upper bound of phi so that is why here 5 is the least upper bound so the least upper bound is defined like this that s be an ordered set and e be a subset of s then an element of S is called the least upper bound for E if that element is an upper bound of E and it is the smallest of all the upper bounds for that set E. And the least upper bound is also called supremum. The least upper bound. is also called supremum so here for this set e the supremum or the least upper bound is 5 so here 5 is equal to supremum of the set E. Now let us define the lower bound for a set. Let S 
be an ordered set and the set E be a non empty subset of S so there is E is subset of S then if there exists exists an element beta belonging to S such that x is greater than or equal to beta or beta is less than or equal to x for all the elements x belonging to E then beta is called a lower bound of E and set E is then called bounded below. This definition states that if we have an ordered set S and E is any non-empty subset of S then any element beta belonging to S will be a lower bound of E if for all the elements of E beta is less than or equal to x or x is greater than or equal to beta. So let us explain this with an example. So again let S be equal to the set of all real numbers and the set E will be equal to the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5. The same example that we did previously for upper bound. So, so this is our real line. So this is the set of real numbers. So this is 0, suppose this is 5 and E is the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5. So this is 1. So E is all real numbers between 1 and 5. So this is E. So this is E. So now according to this definition, any number which is less than all the elements of the set E will be an upper bound for E. So as you can see here that 1 is the smallest number in the set E. So any real number less than or equal to 1 will be a lower bound for the set E. So here every real number x less than or equal to 1 is a lower bound of E. So here 0 will be a lower bound for E 
minus 1 is again a lower bound minus 5 minus 10 all these are lower bounds so again there is an infinite number of lower bounds for the set e but here as you can see here the one here is the greatest of all the lower bounds for the set e so here one is the greatest so here x is equal to 1 is the greatest lower bound. Of him. So x is equal to 1 is the greatest lower bound. Now let us formally define the greatest lower bound. Let S be an ordered set and E be a non empty. subset of S. So, there is E is a subset of S. Then, an element beta belonging to S is called the greatest lower bound of E if number 1 beta is a lower bound of E and for any element g belonging to s if g is greater than beta then g is not a lower bound So let us explain this with the help of an example again. So we take the same example. So we take S the set of real numbers and its subset E to be the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5. So, so this is 0, this is 1 and 5. So, this is E, this is R. Now, you can see that here in the set E, all the numbers less than or equal to R the lower bounds for the set E, but 1 is the greatest of all the lower bounds. So, 1 is the greatest lower bound. So, here 1 is so 1 is greatest lower bound because 1 is a lower bound of E and any number greater than 1 is not a lower bound for E. So, that is why 1 is the greatest lower bound. So, it satisfies this definition of greatest lower bound. And the greatest lower bound is also called
the infimum so it is called the infimum infimum of the set e so here 1 is equal to infimum of the set e a set which has both a lower bound and an upper bound is called a bounded set bounded set a set is called a bounded set if it has both a lower bound and an upper bound otherwise it is called an unbounded set so we have studied that the least upper bound of a set is called its supremum whereas the greatest lower bound of the set is called its infimum supremum and infimum can sometimes be called the maximum values and minimum values respectively but they are not always max and minimum values so the supremum of a set is a maximum value only in the case if it belongs to the set similarly the infimum of a set is called its minimum value if it belongs to that particular set maximum maximum value the supremum of the supremum or the least upper bound is the maximum value of a set if it belongs to that set for example let us talk about the set e that we have been discussing so far e is the set of all x such that all the numbers between 1 and 5 so this is an open interval so here we know that its supremum is so supremum of e is 5 and infimum of e is 1 but here 1 and 5 don't belong to this set e so hence the supremum of e which is 5 doesn't belong to set e so it cannot be the maximum value for this set and the minimum value the infimum
of a set is called its minimum value if it belongs to that set for example in the case of the set e over here it has no maximum value and no minimum value because both its supremum and infimum don't belong to the set e but now let us take an example of of a set and find its maximum value and minimum value so if we take the set e is the set of all real numbers say that one is less than or equal to so this now it is the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5 including 1 and 5 so now 1 and 5 both are included in this set in this case supremum is supremum of e is 5 and infimum of e is 1 is both of them belong to the set e so the maximum value maximum of e is 5 and minimum value of e in this case is 1 now we are going to consider a couple of examples of sets in which we will be finding their supremums infimums maximum values and minimum values so here we take the set of real numbers is the universal set and all the sets that we are going to consider are the subsets of the set of real numbers so here our set s is the set of all real numbers and so for example if we have the set e will be equal to 2 3 so this is again a an open interval 2 3 so this means so it is the set of all real numbers say that between 2 and 3 so this is our set so we have to find its supremum infimum so maximum value and minimum value so here the set e is the subset of the set of real numbers and it is the set of all the numbers between 2 and 3 excluding 2 and 3 so here 2 and 3 are not part of this set so as you can see so what will be so what will be the supremum for this set so the supremum for this set is 3 and infimum is 2 so here supremum and infimum both don't belong to this set so it has no max value and no min value now let's take another example so let us take the set e Five, seven closed interval. So how about this? So closed interval means here it is the set of all real numbers such that so it has all the real numbers 
between 5 and 7 but including 5 and 7. So here 5 and 7 both are included in this head. So here, so what is the supremum? So here supremum of E will be equal to, so supremum is 7 and infimum of this set is equal to, so what will be the infimum? It is 5 and how about maximum value and minimum value? Since here supremum and infimum belong to this set, so it does have a maximum value and a minimum value. So here maximum value of E will be equal to the supremum which is 7 and minimum value is 5. So let us take another example. The set E is the set of all real numbers say that x is greater than 5, greater than or equal to 5. So in this case, supremum of E is equal to what? So what is the supremum of this set? So there is no supremum. And how about infimum? So infimum of E is, is 5 and the maximum value of E is again no maximum value because there is no supremum. So no max value and minimum value is, is equal to infimum because infimum here belongs to the set E. So minimum value is 5. Now let us take another example. Now we take the set E is, E is the set of all y such that y is equal to x square minus x plus 6. So as you can see here, so this is a quadratic function. So let us draw the graph of this quadratic function. So the graph of this parabola, as you can see, the graph of this parabola intersects the x axis at the points minus 3 and 2. So minus 3 and 2 and this is an upward opening parabola. So its graph will look like, so its graph will look like this. So around this. So now, so this is its minimum value. So what is the minimum value for this parabola? So the minimum value lies for the x value which is in between, midway between minus 3 and 2. So this is, so this is negative 1 by 2 and the value of the function this 8x is equal to minus 1 by 2 is, so y is equal to minus 1 by 2 squared minus minus 1 by 2 plus 6 so which is equal to 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 plus 6 which is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 24 which is equal to 27 over 4 so this is the minimum value so minimum value of the function is 27 over 4 so how about supremum? So, supremum of this set E 
since it has no max value its supremum is no supremum really no supremum and how about infimum so infimum of e is equal to 27 over 4 and maximum value of e is again no maximum value and minimum value is 27 over 4 the completeness property of the real number system Every non-empty subset of R which has an upper bound also is a supremum in R. Similarly, every non-empty subset of R which has a lower bound also has an infimum in R. So in today's lecture we have discussed the properties of the set of real numbers. So we have studied lower bounds and upper bounds, supremum and infimum for the subsets of the set of real numbers. And we have also studied the completeness property of the real number system. So with this we come to the end of today's lecture. So if you have any suggestions or questions you can write them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.